What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, I've got 10 brilliant products ideas to share with you and brand ideas that you can start in March of 2024. Please excuse the dodgy video quality and the dodgy background. I'm currently in the process of moving offices at the moment, so currently working with limited resources, but nonetheless, it shouldn't affect the actual value that you can take away from this one. So what I'm gonna do is take you through each of the products that I've found, explain what the product is, and give you what the strategy should be as well if you wanted to go out there and sell and launch one of these products into a brand. So the first product I'm gonna start with is this ultra thin waterproof and Bluetooth wireless earphone. The reason I really like this product is you two may have been in bed on your phone watching something on an iPad and you get kind of tired and uncomfortable and you wanna lie on your side but keep looking at your phone or your iPad or watching or doing whatever it is you're doing. Exactly what they're explaining here. And no matter what earphones you use, it's after a while it becomes really, really uncomfortable and stops you from being able to do so. And this product solves that exact problem. So I think there's a great marketing opportunity here. Certainly for like a platform like TikTok, that's probably where I would start with this product. I'm just really kind of drilling down and emphasizing on how much of a pain point it is to watch your favorite films or go on your favorite social media platform in bed and kind of just really illustrate how painful it can be on your ear and exactly how this product um, can help fix that problem. Another reason why there's lots and lots of potential here is the sales can't be ignored. So yes, these sales numbers are taken from AliExpress and usually I say don't judge a product purely. Well, you should. You should never judge a product purely based on the order numbers on AliExpress because what you have to remember is AliExpress is direct to consumer. They're not a sole drop shipping supplier. However, what the numbers, or what you can take away from the numbers is that there is actually a demand for the product. So as long as there's enough margin on top of the product to sell it and drop ship it, then you're good to go. And in this case, you 100% are. So over $2 million in sales, so I think that's pretty safe to say. Um, people wanna buy this product and people have a need for it. And then number two, we can see the product's cost is $5.60. You could easily sell this product for $30, $40, maybe even a bit higher if it's branded really, really nicely. And what we can also see as well, the real orders trend is that there's been a slow and gradual increase in orders as the weeks and months go on, which again show a strong and increasing demand as more and more people discover and buy the product. Moving on to product number two, we have these baby storage or children's storage units that you put on the back of car seats. These are hands down a brilliant product. And again, they solve like a real life use case problem and issue. And this video actually did a really nice job if I can get it back to the start of showing exactly what that issue is. So instead of all your rubbish and things ending up on the back seat, you have this one thing that goes over the back of any car seat um, and it allows you to obviously opens up all these different storage opportunities. What's really good about this one as well that you don't see in a lot of them is you might they might show it or demonstrate it if it's a good video in a second, but they have, there we go. So they have that kind of like translucent pouch that you can put an iPad in. So if you do want your kids to watch TV or play the games, whatever they're doing, it's a modern day kind of storage solution to having children in the back of a car. So brilliant, brilliant product. And again, the sales reflect the fact that there is a real demand for something like this as well. If we have a look at the product cost, super cheap products, there's not a lot involved in this, a bit of stitching and some material, $3.25. You could easily sell this for $30, I reckon. The other good thing about it as well is you haven't got to have massive markups on this because most cars, I'm trying to think if there's a car out there that doesn't have two front seats, which means there's a great opportunity here to have some sort of bundle offer. You could sell one for say $20 and sell two for $30 or $35. It looks to me that this actually comes two pieces in a set, but I wouldn't put it that way on my Shopify store. I would definitely have one for say $30 or one for $20 and an extra five or $10 for a second one. And if I had to kind of hazard a guess, or if I was a betting man, I would definitely say more and often than not, people would go for two of these things. Then we have this children's drawing and stencil set. Products like this always, always, always do well, especially on platforms like Facebook. So that would definitely be where I would start with something like this, purely because Facebook have an aging user base, an aging demographic. You've heard me say it time and time again, and I don't think anybody can deny, even when you watch other YouTubers producing content on Facebook ads, it's definitely people over the age of sort of probably 50 plus now and females, grandparent type age ranges. Um, and every grandparent, of course, wants to spoil their grandchildren and wants to do it in a way. They didn't grow up with screens, so they much prefer to see their grandchildren not using screens as well. 
So products like this actually get them using their brain, developing their motor skills, their drawing skills. Um, it's a bit of fun that they can do with them as well. And um, products like this always, always, always do really, really well um, on platforms like Facebook. Again, the sales are not to be argued with, with nearly a million dollars in sales, over 40,000 orders. Super cheap product at only one dollar. And again, with a product like this and the hours of entertainment it can provide, you price a product based on its perceived value, not necessarily on what its like material value is. So a great example of this is if you go into like McDonald's, coffee super cheap, it's like £1.50, but you want to go and get it from a Starbucks or Costa, it's like four or five quid. Both probably cost a similar amount to make. However, one is priced based on its perceived value because of the brand that Starbucks has built. If we have a look at the real trends chart as well, we can see again, order numbers slowly and gradually increasing and increasing, 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 which showing a strong and consistent demand for this. Then we have this product. So this was one I was in two minds about using, to be honest. And the reason I wanted to put it in is because there's an important point to take away from this. So my, sometimes I fall, fail or fall at this of judging a product based on my own perception of it or my own, I sometimes look at a product thinking, would I buy that? And this sort of product would not be for me. It's not the sort of thing I would do to my car. However, I'm not the target market for this product. So you then have to kind of take your own perceptions and your own judgments of a product out of the equation and just look at the numbers. So $850,000 in sales, 45,000 orders, super cheap products with great profit margins. There's obviously a demand for them. There's obviously a market out there for a product like this. People who are into their cars and they like that carbon fiber look but can't necessarily afford to say replace the part with an official genuine part, there's definitely, definitely, definitely a market for this. So if it was me or if you're watching this video and you'd like this particular market, then the way I would brand this is there's loads and loads of other products as well, little kind of cheap mod cons you can put in your car to make it more visually pleasing. So you can get like different strips of LED bands that people put in their cars, you can get lights that go underneath, you can get tape to give that carbon fiber effect. So that'd be the type of brands that I would create and I'll probably start on a platform like TikTok because its user base is a bit younger. I can't see many blokes or women um, in their 50s or 60s investing in some carbon fiber car stickers. So I'd definitely go for a younger market on this one. Of course, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't mention something in the dog niche. Um, these dog robes, they sell every single year really, really well during the winter months. We are still in the winter months here in the UK. It's super wet, it's super cold. People who have these larger dogs, especially the larger dogs with the longer hair, they know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that it is a friggin' pain walking your dog in the winter because it takes them ages to dry off. They get your car wet and muddy, they then get your carpets wet and muddy, they get your sofa wet and muddy if you haven't trained them to keep off the sofa like we have. So a product like this, again, solves a real pain point that every large dog, long-haired breed owner has. There's no two ways about it. This is a brilliant product that people will buy if you advertise it well enough and put it in front of them. When it comes to the dog niche, it can be really easy just to kind of create a random dog brand or random pet store that sells anything and everything. I think what would be quite unique is if you had just a winter type dog brand and just stuck to winter related products because then it's kind of like a bit more specific and has a higher perceived kind of perception from a consumer's point of mind. It comes down to the whole thing. If you specialize in one type of product, people are gonna see you as a more kind of educated and higher quality and well-informed brand. Next, we have this LED outdoor power light. Just look at how bright it is. It's a pretty cool product. This is a slightly different variation, a much more powerful variation on an already proven, tried and tested seven figure product. If you check out SPV, is it SPV? I think it's SPV products. They sell a product that's kind of like this, but it's like a tiny little one, tiny little motion light. Whereas this is like a massive, super bright security light. Definitely the market for this would be somewhere in America or probably just America as a whole. I know they're a lot bigger on their security over there in comparison to the UK. I'd definitely go for Facebook too because obviously it's gonna be the homeowner, it's gonna be a slightly older generation that's gonna be going for a product like this. And like I mentioned earlier, there's loads of other similar variation type products like this that you could combine into one awesome store. You could start like a security light type store. So again, you give off that impression of specializing in these types of products, super high quality products and you know what you're doing. You could have outdoor LED ones like this. I showed you in fact on the channel a few weeks ago of one that screws into a normal light fitting that you can put in a basement. 
um, or put in a garage and it has, it's kind of like a fan with lots of different LEDs on a super, super awesome product, really successful. Um, so there's definitely a market for these types of products. And again, the sales numbers are not to be ignored here, at over 850,000. And we can see there's been a gradual increase as well consistently since August. Then we have this awesome boxing pad. It's a relatively new product. You might not have seen this before. Before I go into this though, I just wanna make you aware of the mentorship program I have running at the moment. Every single month I work with five different people. We've got a couple of spots still available for March. So if it's the sort of thing you're interested in and working one-to-one -one with somebody like myself, just check out the links in the description below. Cheers. Okay, so back to the products. It's a pad that you put on the wall, you turn it on, and as the lights appear, then you punch the pressure pads. So it's a good way of kind of developing your reflexes. It's a good way of working out. I don't know about the actual quality of the products and how well it absorbs your punches, because obviously you've got to be careful if you put it against a brick wall background and you're absolutely caning this thing, then you're probably gonna hurt yourself. So you do need to be wary of that. Um, definitely order one of these things to check out for yourself, get some different opinions on it. Maybe it's just kind of like a touch one that you use purely for reflexes purposes um, and get in a workout rather than actually practicing your technique. Back to the children's niche end, I found this cool product. Um, definitely as we're coming to March, as it starts getting somewhat warmer, um, it's actually quite nice and sunny outside. I don't know if you can tell on the camera. Um, as more and more people are spending more and more time outside, it's even the thing you can use inside as well, as we can just see there in the video. It's a really cool game to have to play with your kids. It's a really cool game to have at a party for children. It looks fairly safe as well, and the fact that because it's not shooting out super powerfully, you haven't got to worry about it, um, children hurting themselves. I'd probably put in there somewhere that needs to be supervised by an adult. But either way, as you can see, the kids seem to be loving it. It's a great game and fun game they can play together, running around trying to catch these things in the net. And just to go back to those previous points I mentioned about the previous children's product, it's one of those things that grandparents love to see. They don't want to see their grandchildren sat on an iPad playing a game or social media um, or watching a film. They want to see their kids running around, exercising, having fun with a smile on their face. And this is exactly what this product does. Then we have this product, completely kind of opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to your target market, really. Probably a younger generation for this, somebody like TikTok. The reason I wanted to include this in the video is because I did a separate video on a company that was using organic marketing methods. They were pretty much just posting on TikTok. In fact, they had the product, they had a camera like this filming it, and they were just talking the language that people in that niche would know. They were using certain emojis, that sort of thing and they were doing really, really well. I think they were making 10K profit every month just by posting three to five times on TikTok. This is the exact same product. You can replicate that exact strategy with. There is 100% a market for these types of things on TikTok. So that would be my go-to. There's lots and lots of other different lighters and accessories, I should say, um, in that same niche that you could put on the store that just, again, just kind of helps you build it out um, and build up that brand and reputation. The order numbers not to be ignored, over 16,000 orders, 350,000 in sales. It's definitely the sort of product people are finding cool and interesting and um, actually spending their money on. So now we have this gyro ball. I actually had one of these in university and the amount of hours me and my mates spent on this trying to beat each other um, was pretty ridiculous to be honest. There's definitely 100% an opportunity for a brand in this. So basically the way it works is, as you can see, it's got like a gyroscope in it. And it's all about how strong your kind of like wrists and forearms are. And once you get the motion down, you kind of build it up and up and up and you can feel it. And after a while, it really starts to burn. But the amount of times me and my mates spent trying to outdo each other and shoot a higher score than the other person, we spent a long time, almost every single day, certainly every week, having a go at this. And it's just really good fun. So if it was me, I'd definitely start selling this product. And what I'd actually do is get people to send in their scores and almost have like a leaderboard on the website just to kind of help build that kind of community of people and build up that interest. And when there's that competitive element, people become more invested, don't they, in the product. And what you could do is have some sort of award for, I don't know, whoever's top at the, each, at the end of each week or at the end of each month. And who knows what that could grow into. It could grow into a whole community of people that are buying these things, trying to outdo each other. Um, and who knows, it might even grow into a thing where you have 
an actual premises once a year where people come and compete. Who knows? I just think it's a really good idea for a brand. It gets people competing in a healthy way. Your products will be at the kind of centerfold of it, um, which again is only a good thing for helping grow the business. The sales numbers as well cannot be ignored at over a million dollars, 62,000 orders. Um, that's pretty awesome. As the weather gets better, more and more people are spending more and more time outside. They're doing activities outside. They're playing basketball. They're going on their bikes. They are traveling in the car. They're going to the beach. They're playing football. This is the sort of product that is really, really neat. Um, it's really compact. You can take it with you because of how small it is. You can use it to charge your phone. There's lots and lots of different beneficial functions and features of this product that make it kind of like just one of those kind of like must-have gadgets that every household should have. It can blow up your car tires, it can blow up your um, beach balls and volleyballs and lilos and your um, bike tires as well. I think just all in all a, gen a generally useful product to have around and it's not the sort of thing as well that's very popular certainly here in the UK. Even though you look at the sales numbers of 10 million dollars I don't know anybody who has one of these things. So I definitely think even with this level of sales, it'd be interesting to know what countries they're from mainly. Um, with the right ad, you could even use some of the clips from this because, I mean, what it does is shown quite clearly in the video. You could even use some of these, chop it up, add some of your own in, get somebody on camera, maybe even like an AI video so it is really that quick and easy to produce. Put it out there, spend a couple of hundred dollars on it and see what happens. There's also lots and lots of different marketing opportunities here obviously. So you can target those motoring enthusiasts, you can target the cyclists, you can target the footballers, you can target the basketballers, you can target the travelers. There's lots and lots of different marketing angles here, put it out to everybody, see where you get the most hits, most purchases from, and then really kind of maybe even rebrand and focus purely on that market. Last then we have this mini turbo jet fan. It's kind of like a blower. Again, another kind of handy household gadget that's useful to have lying around. It's one of those products that looks quite neat um, and, and kind of cool, it's quite compact, has that matte effect. The video does a really good job of showing just how powerful it is. And, Again, the many different kind of use case scenarios that it has, there's pretty much like a use case for every household out there. It, like I said, it's just one of those handy kind of tools and gadgets to have lying around. <laughs> you probably wouldn't use it to dry your hair, but certainly when you need to clean your computer or get something out of your keyboard, or maybe if it's just blow the sides down or whatever it may be, it's just one of those kind of like cheapish gadgets that like I keep saying, would be handy to have around. And with a really kind of nicely put together video showing all the different applications and all the different marketing angles, I think it could sell really, really well. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap the video up there. There's my 10 picks for March of 2024. Hopefully you guys have found some value in this video. Hopefully, or more importantly, I've given you some ideas and some motivation to go out there and actually take that leap of faith and get your dropshipping business started rather than continually watching videos on YouTube. If you want some help, some hand-holding, somebody with experience to guide you through the launching process up to a minimum of 10K per month, help you avoid those common pitfalls and mistakes that cost you time and money, then make sure you check out my mentorship program. The links are in the description down below. Click the link, go through the series of questions, let me know where you're at the moment, what you want my help achieving, and then we can have a chat on a call and see if I can help you do that. Have an awesome weekend, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.